Are you interested in somewhere a little bit different to stay on your next Walt Disney World holiday? Have you had enough talk about deluxe, moderate and value resorts? Looking to get out of that Disney bubble just a little bit? Well, join me today on Walt Disney World Adults Only as we take a look at some of the different off-site resorts. Welcome your Royal Highnesses, I'm Natalie and you're watching Walt Disney World Adults Only. Today me and my friends will be taking a closer look at some of the different off-site resorts that you can stay at when you visit Walt Disney World. Now this is something a little bit different and something you might not have even considered. We've definitely spoken about the on-site resorts before and I'll make sure to put the link to those videos in the description below. However, there are lots of different off-site resorts to look at in many different areas, so today we'll be taking a closer look at those. But before we get to it, remember to hit subscribe so you can see all of our different videos. We really enjoy putting these videos together and helping you plan your next Walt Disney World holiday. I would love to see your comments down below about which your favourite resort is, whether it's on site or off site and what you find the best about it. We all know that Walt Disney World offers many resources to choose from, from the deluxe down to the more budget value resorts, but have you ever considered the off-site resorts? Orlando, Kissimmee and Davenport are a holiday makers paradise with so many different hotels and resorts to choose from to fit every budget and every holiday style. There's so many out there. Today I want to take a closer look at a few of the different options to see if you've actually even considered them before and taking a closer look at why me and my friends actually really enjoy them. There's so many different options to choose from, such as the International Drive area, Universal Resort Hotels, and even the recently developed Margaritaville Resort as well. And of course, private rented accommodation, such as holiday homes and villas. I'm lucky enough to have been visiting Walt Disney World since I was quite little. Obviously back then my parents were the planners for everything and decided all of our hotel options. We first started staying on International Drive and then did a few holidays in private rented accommodation such as villas before we found our perfect resort which we keep going back to now. I've definitely stayed in quite a few of the different off-site resort options and to let you in on a little secret, I've never actually stayed on site at Walt Disney World. Now that will be changing soon as on my next Walt Disney World trip I will actually be doing a one week stay at a good neighbour hotel so I'm classing that as close enough to staying on site. The reason I like to stay off site is the freedom that it offers and when me and my family visit Walt Disney World we're not just doing the Disney parks, we do get out of that Disney bubble. We tend to visit Universal, Orlando Resort and a few of the other attractions around Orlando. You may not have even considered the off site resorts but I definitely think they're worth taking a look at. I'll start us off by staying close to Walt Disney World and looking at the Walt Disney World Good Neighbour Hotels. Now, these hotels can be actually on Disney property or in the local areas. And although they're not Disney owned, they do carry part of the Disney title. These hotels to be classed as Good Neighbour Hotels have to have a certain level of amenities and upkeep. Cause obviously Disney's putting their name to them. So they have to have a service desk which is manned to help you plan your Disney vacation and they have shuttles as well to help you get to the Disney parks. These hotels can be a little bit cheaper than staying at true on-site Disney resorts but they're a good in-between step. They're very close to the parks so you're never too far away and you know they're going to be a pretty nice hotel as well. And as an added perk they're also part of the early entry program into the parks which means as a Good Neighbour Hotel Resort guest, you get entry into the parks 30 minutes before the regular guests. Examples of these hotels are the Swan and Dolphin Hotel and the Hilton at Lake Univista. This is the hotel that I will actually be staying at next time, the Hilton at Lake Univista. It's a walking distance from Disney Springs, which makes it perfect to be grabbing some food and some entertainment on a night. And I think it's gonna be a really nice in between step between staying truly off site and at a Disney Resort hotel. Next up, I'm passing us to Mickey, who will be telling us about private rented holiday homes. Thanks, Natalie. Yes, that's right. We stay in villas uh, when we go to Orlando, 
for us that's not something that's just specific to Orlando we stayed in villas all over the world in lots of different places we like to have the space when we're on holiday there's a couple of reasons for that one is that we're just so busy in day-to-day -day life that when we go away we like to just have a little bubble just for us and having a villa when we're away just gives us that ability to do that and have our own space and take things at our own pace and do exactly what we want the other reason is i suffer from chronic fatigue syndrome and fibromyalgia so having a villa gives us the space to be able to do what we need um if we need to have a relaxing day where we're in the pool or having a day on the sofa or an early night or whatever it needs to be there's the options there for one of us to do one thing and one of us to do another if that's what what we have to do and it just works really well for us the villas that we've stayed in when we've been into Orlando so far have all been in the Davenport area it's about a 25 minute drive to the Disney World parks and that's been really good for us it's it's worked well we've been able to plan our days based on that the villas have all been lovely really I'd say they're probably bigger than we need for just two people all at least three bedrooms uh, all have a private pool which is great and they've all had everything uh, some of them have even had a games room which is usually in the garage space um, washing machine dryer which again wonderful you can go home with all of your washing done and not have to do two weeks worth of stuff when you get back we usually bring uh, little washing tablets with us um, and just do the washing every few days so last time we came we stayed in Highlands Reserve which has a community pool of its own so a bigger pool if you prefer to do um, long length swimming it also has a golf club when we come later this year we're staying in West Haven which is actually closer to the parks it's the first time we're staying there that is a gated community and it does have quite a few more amenities than than where we've stayed before it has a clubhouse it has um, a gym I think it has its own restaurant on site for us having the villa works out cheaper because of our situation if we were to stay on Disney property we would have to get a bigger room a family room um and the prices of that we've looked at it and it does work out expensive um and although it would be nice to to stay in the disney bubble it's not feasible for for us when it comes to cost and so staying in the villa is something that works for us um price wise as well as facilities wise if you are looking for tips on money saving we do have a video all about that the link is in the description below so please check it out if you want to save money on your Disney holidays. So that's it from me Natalie all about why we stay in villas. Back over to you. Thanks Mickey. That's really good information and I totally agree. We really loved our holiday staying in villas. Now for us, because we visit the different attractions in Orlando, staying off site was a really good idea because we were never too far away from the different areas and we were kind of in a central location. Now I do find that having a rental car is a really good idea and almost a necessity if you're staying in a villa. However, that does mean that you have to drive in America and on the wrong side of the road. Although there is Uber, it can just be a little bit easier to hop in the car and drive to where you need to go. Next up, we have the hotels and resorts around International Drive. This is a really popular tourist destination and it's really easy to see why. This is basically one really big road, which at one end you have SeaWorld Orlando Resort and pretty much at the other end you have Universal Orlando Resort as well, with both Universal Parks, City Walk and the resorts that they offer as well. International Drive is really handily located. It's only a short distance from Orlando International Airport, which means getting to and from the airport is quite easy. And I have seen that a few of the hotels here offer shuttle buses to and from the airport as well. A lot of the hotels here are only 15 to 20 minutes away from Walt Disney World, although you may have to contend with um, the interstate for, which 
can be a bit of a car park. But a lot of the hotels do offer, again, a shuttle bus to the parks, which can make it a lot easier for you as well. International Drive has a lot of shops, entertainment and dining options. There are loads of restaurants along the road which are in walking distance, which means that you don't have to rely on a taxi or an Uber or have a designated driver. I've come across some really nice restaurants down here, such as Miller's Ale House, The Pub and Bahama Breeze. There's lots of entertainment right there in walking distance, including Adventure Golf at Pirate's Cove. And if you like a little bit of crazy golf, I highly recommend this place. There are also escape rooms, Ripley's Believe It or Not, and Icon Park, which if you're feeling adventurous, might be a pretty cool place to visit. Most recently, although it is still a few years ago now, I stayed at Rosen Inn at Point Orlando. This is a budget to moderate hotel, so it was quite an economical choice for me back then, and I found the location to be really good. It was right across the road from Point Orlando, which is a shopping, dining, entertainment complex, so there was plenty of dining options for us. Although this would probably be my favourite hotel that I've stayed at on International Drive, I'm still not really going to be choosing this place again on my next trip. It was fine, it was clean, it was tidy, it had a great location as I mentioned and you could get a shuttle to the parks although we did have a car. It just didn't have the pizzazz or the great vibe and atmosphere of some of the other places that I've stayed at and I've definitely got my favourite resort which I'll be coming to in a little bit so I would definitely choose to stay there. However, it's fine, it's not in any issues, and if you're not spending much time in the hotel, it might actually be a really great option for you. Overall, I really do like the International Drive area, and when we visit Orlando, we do actually make a trip up to International Drive at least once on every visit to try some of the different restaurants there and go and play crazy golf for nostalgia's sake. I've been playing there since my first trip to Orlando and I always try to have a battle against my dad. I don't think I've ever won yet, but you never know on my next trip. Now it's time to pass to Helen, who will be telling us all about her off-site experiences. Thanks Natalie. I have stayed in several private rented villas across the years, both in the Davenport and Kissimmee areas. Many of my first holidays to Florida were organised by my parents. As there was three generations travelling, it was easier for us to stay in the villa. And we never even considered staying on property. But we have stayed in some fabulous locations over the years. Renting a villa as a family for us was definitely easier. It was more economical for us to rent the villa and the car and even take into account the fuel costs, it still worked out better in the long run. We'd also save money by maybe having breakfast a few mornings before we headed to the park and a few times head home for dinner and have that in the villa as well. The last time that we stayed in the villa was back in 2019. It was in the Davenport area and the villa was absolutely beautiful. It was a six bedroom villa and it was ideal for the six adults that were there at that time. However, it was an absolute nightmare driving to the parks. We were about 15 minutes away from the I-4, then we'd hit all the early morning traffic on the I-4, and it would be a good 30 to 40 minutes before we actually hit the Disney parks. Heading home on an evening was just as bad. It would sometimes take us nearly an hour to get back to the villa. And after a long day at Disney, this isn't the best. It definitely made me reconsider about staying off property in the future. My last trip I stayed at Port Orleans French Quarter and it was a completely different experience. No stuck in traffic, no hassle of driving and staying in the Disney bubble the whole time. For me personally, I don't think I'd stay off site again. It was so much easier with Disney transport and being so close to all the parks and the resorts. That's my take on off site resorts. What's your favourite Natalie? Thanks Helen. My favourite off-site resort to stay at is actually Regal Oaks Resort. Now, I found this resort a couple of years ago and we've been back here on every single trip since. This is a private, secure resort area of townhouses. The houses are a little bit different, but they all have private bedrooms, private bathrooms with a kitchen area, so you can do some cooking on an evening if you so desire and don't want to go out. And they also have a private lanai area with a hot tub and sun lounges as well. So I find it really good. It's a bit of a mix between staying at a hotel type resort and private rented accommodation. It's a very secure resort with a gate and a passcode to get in, and there's always a security guard on as well. 
but you have the extras of having a restaurant, bar and clubhouse on site with people helping to plan your vacation if you need the assistance. There's also a little shop on site for the essentials too. Although you don't have a private pool in your townhouse, there is a really nice pool area where you can go and explore. Now, in regards to location, I found this absolutely perfect. It is located just behind Old Town Kissimmee, just off of Highway 192. So you've got plenty of entertainment and dining options right there, just a couple of minutes walk away. But it's still only 10 minutes to Walt Disney World property and probably about 20 minutes to Universal Orlando Resort as well. So really is smack bang in the middle of everything that you could want. It's only a short drive away from Celebration there's a Publix around the corner and I just discovered a new Pirate's Cove adventure golf place as well. The next trip that I will be going on is going to be a one week mother and daughter's trip where we'll be staying at the Hilton at Lake Buena Vista which is a Disney Good Neighbour hotel and then the second two weeks my boyfriend and my dad will be flying out to join us and we'll be staying at Regal Oaks so I get the best of both worlds. I'm really excited about this upcoming trip. I think that brings us to the end of our overview of off-site resorts. I would really like to hear if you stay off-site, on-site or have something a little bit different planned. And with that, thank you for watching. If you liked our video, please hit the thumbs up. I remember to subscribe and hit the notification bell so you know when our videos are released. If you're not already a member of our fantastic adults only Facebook group, please join today. The link is in the description down below where we'll continue this discussion along with many more. And remember, never grow up. And remember, never grow up. And remember, never grow up.